People have lost faith in their ability to determine their own destiny. And they have felt more and more that their health is less and less in their control, more influenced by the decisions of insurance companies, the food industry, the government, hospitals, and pharmaceutical companies. We, as a profession, all of us, are called upon to reverse this tide of chronic illness by changing culture and by, in fact, creating a culture of prevention in America, a culture where we are as good at preventing illness as we are at treating it. So the happiest day of my life was when I, I found out I got into medical school. I complain quite a bit about the difficulty of this process, and so does everyone else. You, know, you go into medical school thinking it's going to be hard and knowing it's going to be hard, but when you get there, it's that much harder. It kind of has to be this rigorous because every person is unique, and then within each person, there's just infinite number of combinations of the things that can be going right or wrong. As a DO, I could become a physician who would treat patients and prescribe medications for them, do surgery for them. But being an osteopathic doctor allows a physician to have an additional tool in their toolbox. In osteopathic medical schools, we are trained uh, extensively in osteopathic manipulative treatment, OMT. And from day one, you start developing a sense and appreciation for palpation. That's learning how to feel and I have to say learning because we feel things every day from when we put on clothes to be putting food in our mouths, but we just take that sense of feel for granted. When you put your hands on someone, what you feel with your fingertips, you don't realize exactly how many different things you're feeling. It gives you so much information, and it's a lot of information that is really kind of getting lost in these advances in technology, and it's something that's so basic and so fundamental and so important. When you first start, you, you really aren't exactly sure kind of what you're feeling, what you're touching. Um, sometimes maybe you make things up, like, yeah, I, I, I feel that. And it'll kind of hit you one day, like, oh, wow, I, I felt that. It's a really cool experience. It's pretty much like any skill that needs to be honed. It's something that you have to do every day, and you have to be hard on yourself. The hardest thing for me to learn is how to play in tune, which took a long time, and I'm still working on that. To be able to use your knowledge of what you learned in anatomy and in physiology, uh, you can use what you feel to have a better understanding of what's going on inside a person's body. A patient of mine in California brought me the Life magazine from 1962 or 61. At that time, you were not allowed as an MD to refer to osteopathic physicians. I hear stories where they had to sneak an osteopathic physician into a hospital in Massachusetts General to treat someone because officially they were not allowed to do that. A good friend of mine is actually an alum from this school. And he's like, you know, you really should have applied to DO schools. And for some reason, I didn't, I didn't think to. A lot of people don't really understand what makes us different from a chiropractor or a an osteopathic medical doctor in another country that doesn't actually have the same training we do. The distinction comes in when you really look at how we're being trained. It's not just saying, oh, I've got a gut feeling. It's the entire spectrum of medicine. There's osteopathic surgeons, neurosurgeons, cardiology, we have osteopathic psychiatrists. We do have the background, the learning, the training to do all of the standard Western or Orthodox medicine plus the addition of the osteopathic component. Well, I'm an experimental psychologist from Oxford University, interested in the senses of the consumer, the person at home, the person in the hospital, and how knowing about unexpected connections between our eyes, our ears, our nose and our mouth can be used in all walks of life. There are scientific studies to demonstrate the beneficial effects uh, of touch. Um, and maybe until 10 years ago, we might not have known the um, mechanism. Sometimes it makes some suspicious, or if I don't know the mechanism, then, then it can't be true or I don't believe it. But this is why I think the, um, the all of the research uh, coming out from the, from the neuroscience labs on these uh, effective touch system provides the mechanism. There is a, a groundswell of, uh, of interest, a growing realization of, of, the, of the power of interpersonal touch. One of the things that I'm particularly interested in is the interface between the technology and what we do with our hands. Um, one should not exclude the other, and one should not supplant the other. We're not just 
MDs plus an extra skill set. It's a philosophy difference. One of the tenets of osteopathic medicine is that the body has the innate ability to heal itself. Some of my OMT faculty, they've told me that they've been helping out MD schools to teach understanding the body as this self-healing unit that just has a block. So healing is not the action of the doctor, it's just the action of the body that sometimes gets tripped up and the doctor's job is to just remove the stumbling block. It's not just um, what symptoms do you have, it's more about, okay, you're a person, what's, um, what is happening, and are these extenuating circumstances really affecting your health? Like in dance, you can touch another person and know exactly how to lead them. I learned how to transfer my dance skills into something else that can actually help people. I do, of course, want to know about their medical ailments that bring them to see me, but I want to know them as a whole person. I want to uh, encourage patients to really take control of their own health care. We're being told that we have to be able to understand the subtext of what's being said just from vocal cues. What happens when you take penicillin? Uh, I broke out of a rash. You broke out in a rash. Do you have any lung problems, any asthma? I had an upper respiratory infection. Respiratory infection. Right, lower, low, low. Okay. Hi. 78, 80. Is that 95? Do you guys want to intubate him now? I am not the driver as the physician. What I should be is the listener and really find out what the question is the patient has. Of course, my job is all about listening. My aim really is to teach the world to listen. My teacher said, well, how are we going to do this? You know, music is about listening. And I said, yes, I agree with that. So what's the problem? And he said, well, how are you going to hear this? How are you going to hear that? Through my hands, through my arms, my cheekbones, my scalp tummy, my chest, my legs, and so on. It's unbelievably important for us to, to, to really test our listening skills, to really use our bodies as a resonating chamber. About 50% of DOs join uh, primary care, whether that's in pediatrics or internal medicine or family medicine. In the medical world where everything is becoming so subspecialized, we need more of those physicians. We can help limit the uh, prescribing of narcotics. The abuse of that is huge in this country. Help alleviate the pain just by using our hands and using osteopathic medicine, then it's huge for the person and huge for the country. As physicians, we should want to help those who are in need. By having a student-run free clinic, we can decrease healthcare expenses overall. Now, those same patients who would have waited till they got severely ill will need to go to the hospital and the emergency rooms, which will save a lot of money in the long run. A lot of osteopathic schools are also opening in more rural areas where there's even more of a need for physicians. Insurance companies cannot order a test till a certain age of 50. At 50 years old, that person could already have metastatic breast cancer. We're just more keen into asking more questions and checking out the patients to make sure they're okay. If we start earlier, we could prevent it. The students, in my opinion, they, they have come up to the plate. We have to be realistic with them to say, look, most likely you will not be the big million dollar makers, but they're not looking for the luxury there. They see it either as a calling or as a real fulfillment. And we as a society, I think we have a responsibility to say, we support you that way. If we drop them and try to make them like hourly technology workers that you have to see 15 patients an hour and, and 20 of this, if we fail them there, we'll fail society.
I think doctors hold a special role in society. Your job is to help people. You can't help everyone that, that you meet, but it's still your job to treat them with as much dignity as possible. You're bestowed so much trust from pretty much a stranger, a doctor, someone who should really value that privilege. Being a DO actually kind of speaks, I think, to the heart of medicine. The heart of people. Your passion is to help people in their entirety, not just a symptom. Put down your phones, put down your computers, and actually look and talk and be with the patient. Social and psychological aspects also contribute to illnesses. What is going on in your life that we can assist you with? So if they were educated in how to eat, how to manage stress, and that might cause chest pain. Felt like they were cared about, that will probably help with their illnesses in addition to treating them as a patient. And building that partnership. The world is changing. The notoriety of what a DO is is increasing. It's slowly sort of percolating through society. Okay, well, we've over-medicated so much, and it only helps so much. Younger people are hearing about it. Their families are hearing about it. We're the physicians that are on the floors of the hospitals. I think the world's going to take notice.